19 years old. I'm from Dallas, Texas. So it is Kelly OG here. I know you're probably used to me saying that. With that being said, I'm gonna take you into today's video. Um, make sure you're following me on my social media. It is at Kelly OG on all social medias. Um, I'll never ask you for money. I will never DM you to invest for you. I don't invest for anybody. So I have a lot of scammers, avoid them. I am going to tell you today, without further ado, um, the 10 things that I wish I knew before I started trading that I feel like would have saved me tens of thousands of dollars. And it's not even I feel, it's just the straight statistic. I would have saved thousands, tens of thousands of dollars had I stuck to these things, not done these things, or done these things. And I'm gonna take you guys through it because I've lost a lot of money in the stock market and I've also made a lot of money in the stock market. And so hopefully something I say you can apply to your trading life and it can help you avoid a lot of avoidable mistakes. So the first thing, the very first thing would be learning the Greeks. Now, if you don't know what the Greeks are, you shouldn't be trading it. I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, so the Greeks essentially are the things that'll make your options contract move. Now, if you don't know what options trading is, make sure you check out my other video um, where I fully break down options trading, what it is, and how I make on average $1,000 a day, sometimes a little higher, really anything less. But the Greeks, basically, you have Delta, Theta, Gamma, Rho, and Vega, and they all play a part. Now, the most important ones are Delta and Theta because they're gonna tell you the amount of money you're making per dollar that the stock moves up or down and the amount of money you lose per day of holding that contract. These are very important because a lot of times people will buy a super cheap contract because it looks cheap and then the stock is shooting up or shooting down and they're like, Kelly, well, I'm not making any money but the stock is moving the way it's supposed to. You know, I bought a call and it's going up or I bought a put and it's going down and they're not moving and people get upset and I'm like, hey, what do your Greeks look like? And, and they look terrible, you know, because the Greeks are gonna get worse the cheaper you try and go, like the farther from the current share price. So. That's something really important to know because it could save you thousands of dollars. You don't want to go and pump, you know, like five hundred dollars into a into buying fifty contracts because they're ten bucks a pop, right? And then all of a sudden lose that because the ten dollars has no actual value. So you're just blowing five hundred dollars when you could have put that into maybe even just one contract, and boom, you could have made ten times more money. So that is very important. Make sure you learn that. Make sure you know that. If you want to understand the Greeks, again, it's in my options trading breakdown video. We are 30,000 views and counting, so that makes me super happy. But that's number one. Number two, 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 two. <laughs> this is very important. Missed money is better than lost money. So I tell a lot of my members, um, you know, because we all experience this thing called FOMO. Let's first talk about FOMO because FOMO is real. You could even add this as a bonus thing that I wish I knew. But FOMO is essentially fear of missing out. So let's say you see a stock shoot up and somebody, you know, you're in a trading group similar to Cash Capital, the number one trading group in the world. So let's say somebody says, hey, I just made $500 or, okay, for example, there was someone in our group the other day, she turned $99 into 5,400. She turned 100 bucks into 5,000. $400 overnight and a lot of people felt this urge and this rush and this feeling of like wow I could have changed my life had I been able to get into that same place what they try and do is chase or maybe somebody's already in a play and they try and chase and chase and chase and chase that play and they try to get into it and listen again missed money is better than lost money because what happens when that FOMO takes over you get in and you put a lot of money in because they're like wait if this shoots up even more then i can make you know the same amount as this person or even more i could pay for my bills or i could buy a lambo or i could buy the newest pair of jays or whatever whatever you know you can go be dior the don and be dripped out cool however a lot of times when a stock is shooting up people buy at the top and think of a roller coaster that's how i always put it a roller coaster once it gets to the top it has to come down at some point. You can't just keep going up in a roller coaster. You have to come down at some point. So a lot of people get into the top and then they're met at the bottom, faced with a lot of losses. And they're like, you know what? I quit trading. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I hate it, you know, and that is not how it works. You have to really just make sure you are paying attention 
to what needs to be done and paying attention to what you want to do. It's okay to miss out. I've missed out on so many squeezes. I missed out on GameStop. I missed out on AMC. I missed out on all the big runs that people saw tens of thousands percent returns and really turned like $10 into, I, I remember with, with GameStop, I saw um, contracts that were $1 um, the next day were worth $5,000. So people were turning $1 into 5K overnight and I missed out on that and that's okay because Options is not a get rich quick scheme. Can you get rich quick? Yes, but it is not a scheme. You want to make sure you're compounding your account and you are on to number three, setting a plan. So you want to make sure that with any trade you're getting into, you have a plan of when you're getting out and when you're taking your profit. So for example, there's many ways to do it. Um, I tell some people you can do it based on percentage. So you can tell yourself, listen, if I'm down 20%, I'm taking my profit, or I'm cutting my losses, because you don't have profit, unfortunately, but I'm cutting my losses. Or you could tell yourself, um, hey, when I'm up 50%, I'm taking my profits for sure. That's my cutoff zone. Don't make it too unrealistic. I'll have people tell me, well, at 500%, I'll take profits, and at you know, 15%, I'll cut losses, so I can build my account a lot more and lose a lot less. And I'm there like, 500%, do you know how often and how common 500% happens. It happens a lot, but it's not going to happen with every single trade. Some trades you may only be in up to 40%. You may only be in up to 20%. You may be in till 80, you may be into a thousand. You don't know. So just be realistic with those. I, I tell people, keep it in a range. You know, so you could tell yourself, listen, I wanna sell for 100%, but I will sell also for about 60%. So. Think about it, right? If if that stock is shooting up and your current returns at 80% and you say, well, it's going to 100, so I'm going to sell at 100 and then it starts coming down. The second you see it like 62%, take your profits and leave. You still made 60% profit on your investment. So definitely worth it. Make sure you have a plan. Another way people do it is based on share price. Um, however, I would tell you don't ever, unless you were just an avid charter, don't say, I want it to go to this price um, because in my group, right, we'll give you price targets. So we'll say entry is above this. Your price targets are this, this, and this. So let's say entry is above $15. Your price targets are $17, $19, and $25. Bucks. And so sometimes the stock will go from $17 to $19. And then you have those people that are up a lot or they lose a lot, like they lose everything, and well, why didn't you sell? You know, we'll ask them that, and they say, well, I was waiting for it to get to the third price target. Stocks may never touch that price. Um, unless you're an avid charter, that's where you can really tell. Um, but I tell people, well, listen, focus on your percentage when it comes to taking profits. If you are cutting losses, you can focus on percentage or share price. So if the entry was $15, but then the stock shoots down to $13, and that's where you're like, hey, now this is going down more than up, you know, based on what you may base it on, but hopefully technicals, then that's when I would say get out. You will save yourself and your account a lot. Um, I believe there's a Warren Buffett photo of the amount of money you have to make to make back your losses. And you'll notice with every time you chip at a loss, you take like a 99% loss, you have to make like a thousand percent return to get it back. So anywho, so let's move on to number four. This is actually gonna take me back to my early days of trading and it is not knowing that news was priced in and um, it's actually going to contradict a little bit number five but that's okay um but not knowing the news is priced in essentially what this is is actually we're going to go to number five right so buy the rumor sell the news and number four which is not not knowing the news is priced in they both correlate with each other so buy the rumor sell the news right for example, um, and I've mentioned this example before, whenever the House or the Senate, I believe it's the House, they were voting on legalizing cannabis, well, that rumor and, oh, they're going to vote, they're going to vote, they're going to vote, made all the cannabis stocks shoot up. Right. Cool beans. Amazing. They shot up. A lot of people made money. And we kept holding. Why? Because, hey, when they approve it, these are going to go to the moon. We're all going to be rich. Tendy town. You know, here's what happened. Whenever the bill did get passed, or I should say more so approved, it actually ended up being that everything shot down because news was priced in. 
These literally go hand in hand. It's gonna be a little confusing, so I'm gonna break it down just a slight bit more. Essentially what happened was you heard so much rumor of it's gonna get passed, it's gonna get passed, maybe it'll get passed, that by the time it does or doesn't get passed, and honestly, if it didn't, probably would stocks probably would've shot down, but anywho, by the time the, the rumor becomes true news, it's already had its effect. So it's really important to understand that um, that may not happen. So for another example is recently Pfizer was approved by the FDA, FDAA, FDA, A? Is it FDA? It's just one A. <laughs> Sorry guys, it's just one A. <laughs> but yeah, so just a little bit ago, Pfizer was approved by the FDA as you know the COVID vaccine to get. Cool. However, um, the whole time that there was the rumor of, is it gonna be Pfizer, is it gonna be Moderna, is it gonna be Pfizer, is it gonna be Moderna? What happened is they were both shooting up equally. Now, when it came out that Pfizer was the shot to take, Pfizer just was stagnant and then just dropped down. And a lot of people were confused. They said, well, it was just approved, it was just approved, it was just approved. But even though it was just approved, doesn't mean anything, like really, because it was already priced in. You'd heard so much rumor. By that time, it's like, who cares about the truth? And, and that goes in like anything that deals with gossip. If you're in high school, if you're in college, you know, somebody could say, hey, I heard that dude pooped his pants when he was seven years old. And he could, he, so many people can talk about it, but by the time the truth comes around, it's like, we don't care. <laughs> you know, like we chose to believe what we wanted to. So that's really important to know. Um, and also another bonus tip, news is an immediate reaction. So if news comes out and the stock stays stagnant, the news didn't have an effect on the stock. But if news comes out, you're gonna see the stock shoot up out of nowhere or shoot down out of nowhere. It's an immediate reaction. So please note that. Um, number, I wanna say this is number six. This is number six. Um, this is not number six. This is number six. So what I tell people all the time is take profits, not screenshots. Whenever you're starting out, there's a lot of excitement when you look at your phone and you're like, oh my gosh, like, dude, I don't know where, you're just chilling in bed and you realize you made $50, you made $100, you made $200, just sitting in bed. And it is the craziest thing to wrap your head around once you first start trading because so many people are used to actually having jobs and actually having to go and do a lot of physical labor for their money. And so it's almost like a shock when you're in bed and you're making your salary or your wage in you know seconds, minutes, however long it may take. But take that screenshot and as soon as you take that screenshot, please press the sell button because most of the time that's you telling yourself, hey, I'm ready to take profits. And that also takes me into number seven. If you have to ask to sell something, you should probably just sell it. So I know a lot of people in groups, and this was even me in groups, it was, um, is anyone still in this stock? Do y'all think I should sell this? Where do y'all think the top is? Should we sell now? How far do you think it'll go up? You know. And I would always ask those questions, and I see people ask those questions all the time, so it takes me back to when that was me. Um, if you have to deal with that doubt, you're already pretty comfortable with the money, and so you probably should just take it. I don't care if that stock shoots to the, the moon tomorrow. I don't care if that stock makes people billionaires and millionaires tomorrow. At the same time, that stock can shoot straight down. And I need you to really focus and say, hey, this is about account building, not how much money can I make in the fastest way. If you miss out on it, completely cool. You'll catch another one tomorrow. Keep having that mindset and building and it'll help you be consistently profitable. So if you have to ask when to sell, if you should sell, what to buy, you should probably just chill back and that'll also take me into number eight. I believe that's number eight. Never blindly follow a play. It's very important that if you are getting into a play, you know why. A lot of groups and um, just people in general will just post a play like, hey, Walmart $127 call expiring 1226 whenever. Those are just random dates and the market likely won't be open on the day after Christmas, but any who's, um, you will see that and you'll just, okay, let me go get in it. And if you make money, you're super happy. If you lose money, you're super sad. But if I asked you, hey, why did you get in that? Regardless if you, if, if you made money or lost money and you're kind of like, well, I don't know, a random dude posted it. You know, unfortunately, the only person you can really blame is yourself. 
And I don't want anyone to have to blame themselves. So that's why, you know, my group, it's a requirement for us. You know, if we're getting into a play, we tell you why, we show you why. So if we're seeing something on the charts, this is why this, this is. We won't just blindly drop a play because we want you to be able to do it yourself and understand why you're getting in. If it's a fundamental play, hey, Tesla announced that they're accepting Dogecoin as payment. You know, that that's something that could shoot Tesla up or this CEO stepped down. That's a reason that could shoot something up or down. So it's really important to know why you're getting into a play, um, whether it's your own personal play or whether it's someone else's play and never feel afraid to ask why, especially if you are paying um, for a group or if you're paying someone for their, you know, call outs or even if you're following it on Twitter, it's always okay to be like, hey, why do you think it's going up? If they can't give you an answer, save yourself the money because you, you're not confident. If you're not confident, you shouldn't even be taking the trade. So that'll also take me to number nine. Um, and I know this is like my favorite thing, but learn technical analysis even though you don't want to. I know that when you look at those charts, you want to pull your hair out and you want to bang your head against the wall and say, this thing makes no sense. I don't understand why Kelly likes it so much. But whenever I started trading, I started to observe every successful trader I knew and I realized every single one of them used technical analysis. Every single six-figure trader used technical analysis. Every millionaire trader used technical analysis that was consistently profitable, not just, you know, went crazy on GameStop and made a ton of money or went crazy on Dogecoin or went crazy on whatever, you know. But every single consistent one used technical analysis. And I said, dang, Kelly, maybe I have to learn this thing because the beauty of technical analysis is it's going to tell you where the lowest the stock can drop to, the highest it can come to, if it can go even higher than that or if it can go even lower than that. And I wish I would have known that when I first invested in Riot because Riot went from $27 to $80 literally overnight with the snap of your fingers, like over a four day span, just kept going up 20 bucks a day. And um, eventually it dropped from the $80, it started dropping down and down and down and down. And the irritating thing was I kept hoping and hoping and hoping, hey, hopefully Riot's gonna come back up. Hopefully it's gonna come back up. And Riot was just one steep line down. And people will be able to tell that, hey, Riot's about to be one steep line down if they're looking at the charts. But if you're hoping and praying that it'll go back up, Riot doesn't care about your hopes. Riot doesn't care about your prayers. It doesn't. The stock just does what it's supposed to do based on what it's done in the past. Chart patterns, all that different analysis. So it's really important that you learn it. Um, you know, I always try and break down how I do it. And I want people to understand that it's not as hard as it looks. People trade different strategies. People trade different ways. I personally think the way I trade is a lot easier than most people. And it produces a lot of crazy returns. So I hope it does the same for you. And that also brings me to number 10, the final, final, final thing that could have saved me tens of thousands of dollars in the stock market. That is, hope does not exist, okay? Hoping, like I just mentioned with Riot, is not gonna make the stock move your way. Hoping is not going to make you a lot of money. You don't just get in something and say, well, I think it's gonna go up. I hope it does, but why are you still in it? I don't know, I feel like, why do you feel? Well, I just think, you know, like that type of thing. Ignore the doors. See, that's, the, that's hope creeping in. When you hear hope creeping in, close the door, please. Hope is not gonna do anything. Stick to the facts, stick to the stats, stick to the basics. And um, you know, that's, that's basically what's gonna work. I took my trading from, you know, I made $26,000 from fundamental trading and then I lost 16,000. Um, and then I had $10,000 left, took that 10,000, sold out of everything and just let it sit. I went, I learned technical analysis for a whole month and cried because uh, it wasn't easy. But as soon as I got back in the game, that 10,000, I turned into 100,000 with cash capital plays, with my plays. And if you know me on social media, if I drop a play, I'm not missing it. So, and that's literally from technical analysis, not from hope and prayers. And hopefully everyone doesn't say I suck at trading because I just dropped this play and it better go. No, I know it's gonna go that way because it's done in the past and I'm studying the charts. So with that being said, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it really helps you. If you have to come back to this video a billion times to remind yourself, hey, don't do this, don't do this. 
it'll help you um, set a plan, have proper risk management, and do your due diligence. Like That's basically the whole summary. If I could sum up this video in three simple steps, just do all of that. You will be a really profitable trader. $20 a day, $50 a day, $100 a day, $10,000 a day, it doesn't matter. Just focus on being consistent with making profits because now the market's funding your Chick-fil-A, not your job, you know, so that is just all that I have to say. Again, my name is Kelly OG and um, I hope you choose to follow me. I hope you choose to listen and I wish you all the best investing, trading and succeeding in life.